Alright guys, welcome back to Vince Bell Customs. This is going to be part two of the Sagat uh, paint up work in progress. So, basically after he's all washed up, got all the residue off, we're going to start fixing up the errors. Now, I looked over the heads, the bodies, the base, everything, and there's a couple little errors here and there. Nothing major, typical stuff. So I had this stuff uh, called Tamaya Putty. Good stuff. Uh, order it on eBay, get a couple tubes, pretty cheap. Um, so there's like little tiny pinholes here and there. Now this stuff is good because you don't need to mix up A's where you mix up a bunch of A's and then fill it in. This stuff is actually pretty good so it just fills in little holes. So you can just take the little gap right there. You can put it on top of the head. And you can just like use some water or you can lick your finger. Just don't lick it after you do it. And just kind of push it in. It'll fill up the hole. And you just let that sit for a little while, you know, it doesn't take too long and you can sand it down. So, what I'll do is I'm going to fill up a couple gaps here and there and stuff. But, there is little tiny um, errors here and there. Like in the key areas, there might be some extra little uh, spot here or there. Let's see if we can get in closer. So, there's like a little, little thing here and there. So, you can use an X-Acto knife and kind of just cut it away. And so this way the keyed area doesn't hit anything. Now if there's a little bit of a line, you can kind of cut that out as well. Uh, just check any other little parts now. Some of these parts have some extra gunk. Let's see if we can get in here a little closer. Like in here. There's some stuff in here. So to get that stuff out, you can use an X-Acto knife or if you have a Dremel tool and you can uh, make sure let's see the other hands the other now you may not have to do this with all the parts you just want to make sure that everything's going in nice and flush if there's kind of like any uh, stuff that's hitting and you need to cut it out you cut it out just be careful and cut yourself if you're using an exacto knife So it's going in pretty good. So any other little errors and stuff like this, what I'll do is I'll go into the garage and really drill it out. But there is some uh, heavier gaps underneath here in the leg and over here. So basically what I'll do is I'll take some more of the, the putty and just go around and look for some errors if there's any kind of... The reason why I'm squirting it out right on the tube is because I just want to fill it in. Because if you kind of put this stuff in and let it sit, it kind of sinks and it shrinks a little bit. But this works out pretty good. And you can there's other types of putties you can use. It all depends on what you like, what you're used to, what you have. Uh, I like this stuff because it works out for me. And it sands down very well. And the good the good thing about this stuff is paint sticks to it pretty well. So if you actually use this on a statue that's already painted and you need to actually paint over a little area, this stuff works out pretty good. So, any other little areas here and there that I don't like, fill it in. And there's some uh, extra gunks on the key areas here and stuff, so that's all going to get drilled out. So this way, everything goes on pretty good. Now... There is some bubbles around the base too, little tiny uh, 
bubble stuff. Let's see if we can get into there. Kind of hard to say, but they're in the little bubbles, so basically you can use your X-Acto blade and you can just kind of pop them out. And you can just go around the base. Now there's some uh, little bubbles here and there within the base too. Uh, if you have some kind of a dentist tool, you can kind of just pop them out, grind it. If you can't, you can get your uh, Dremel. Basically, you just go around the whole base, uh, you know, any other little areas like that and stuff. So, as I was working and looking it over, though, I did start to find that the clear stuff has extra flashing around it. There is some extra uh, stuff that's kind of shouldn't really shouldn't be there. Now, to actually take that stuff off, what I do is I get my adapter and I use this uh, padded uh, felt stuff for the uh, Dremel tool. And what I'll do is I'll uh, get that set up. We'll go in the garage and I'll show you how I take that off. So that kind of helps buffing it away without scratching it up and you still keep the clear resin. So what I'll do is I'll pack up some more stuff, cut some stuff, and then we'll go into the garage. Okay, we're in the garage now and this is the best place to do this. So you get your uh, Dremel tool. It's got this little screw piece on here and then you get your little uh, felt pad thing and you pretty much just screw it on. So that's pretty much on there. Now for this, uh, you want to be careful, but what it does is it pretty much just kind of like buffs it out. So let's see if we can try to get a little closer. So there's these little two divots on the edge of it, so you want to just kind of... Alright, so each piece here, this one was pretty much clean up in here, but it's got some flashing and stuff around the edges I gotta clean up. But for this piece here, there is an extra little piece over in here, and that's gotta come out, otherwise it's never gonna fit the hand. So on this Dremel tool, I have uh, this uh, piece here, which is like cutting ceramic tiles. So you want to go fairly just like kind of down, but make sure, you know, just something like this will just cut right through anything. So be careful with this. So we want, basically, we just want to cut that off. Alright, so that's pretty much off of there. And just to make a test, I think it's this hand. Get this one. Nope, it's the other one. Want to make sure it goes on the hand. Looks pretty good, it goes on the hand now. It's not falling off. So we're good. But we still got some more uh flashing to take off on these. So you just take this tool.
So you may go through a couple of these and you can pretty much buy them at the Home Depot and stuff. Like I said, my thing, I'm actually going to chrome this so it doesn't really matter that it, whether it's clear or not and it's pretty. But this is just to help you guys out when, when you get it, you can actually take off the flashing where it's not really all that messed up. And it's not grainy and this is kind of how you do it. And I think you could buff it out. I'm sure if you get finer sandpapers and buff, you can buff it and get a nice clear shine. So that's pretty much that step. So the next step I'm going to do is I'll start drilling out all the holes into the pieces so I can pin them. So I'll give you an idea of one or two of them, how I'm going to drill it. And then from there we'll come back to the video and we'll show you how everything's already uh, drilled out. Alright, so basically we're going to show you how I uh, set up the pin process. Basically you can go to Home Depot, Hobby Stores and you get this thin uh, copper metal rods. You can use any kind of metal rods. You can use screws. You can use whatever you want. It's just as long as it's a metal rod to pin it basically holding the two leg pieces together. So, but I cut those after I drill my hole. So I use my Dremel tool. Make sure you have on your protective goggles and if you're doing this, uh, have a mask too. You don't want to breathe in a lot of this stuff, but I'm just kind of showing you on this one. And what you want to do is just go right into the center part. Okay, so that's pretty much that hole, and then what you do is you find the center on this one. <laughs> so you pretty, I pretty much have two uh, holes there, so then after that, you get your rod. And you kind of just uh, measure it out so it goes in that far and it goes in that far so I needed about I guess about that much and you just get a cutting tool and you just want to make sure that this pin is a uh, pretty good if you need to but so uh, no nope, it goes in doesn't hit it anything so we're good now I do a little extra step basically because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use magic sculpt to kind of get them in and I actually sometimes if you do a little too much extra magic sculpt it won't push all the way in so I kind of like to I guess you give it like um, a staple effect kind of thing. And the reason why I did a little things here and there is because I'm also going to use glue when I do this. So it's kind of like if you put all the glue in here and then you push it, the glue's going to fall all around. But if you can actually give little areas for the glue to kind of grab onto and kind of go into those holes, it helps you out a little bit more. So you can actually do a little bit more if you wanted to. You don't have to go super crazy, but it helps. So that pretty much helps me make sure that that piece is going to be set. And that's the way I like to work, because I'm actually going to paint him as one whole piece. I don't like painting this and then gluing it on. I like to make sure all my seams are pretty much in there and stuff. So pretty much the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to do this to all my pieces. And then once all that's done, I'll show you how I start pinning them together and actually priming it and sanding it down and getting it all nice and clean before I do paint. So we'll come back when I'm ready to start painting everything. 